introduction I've ever had on a date. Oh, you're welcome. It will be better when you had mine. I feel like after that, I have to read Charlie's annual appraisal now. <laughs> this is um, it's a poem called Twelve Dates, but um, the subtitle is Undercover Fuck, fuck Boy. Um, it's about that. I was having a conversation with some friends of mine, and one of my friends said she was on her twelfth date with this guy. And it got me thinking, like, we'll have to do something. It got me thinking, who, who is the kind of guy who gets to twelve dates when the woman is still counting to twelve dates? <laughs> 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 it's that weird mix of like supportive but negging and kind of like listener but also self-entitled and that kind of you know, that kind of weird kind of mix of I'm not quite sure where you are with this person so this is 12 day guys on our first date you mentioned in passing that you quite like Shakespeare subsequently I have shaved the top of my head to resemble Shakespeare. <laughs> I have determined to act in every single Shakespeare play, even the shit ones. <laughs> I have learnt the sonnets off by heart, even the shit ones. <laughs> I am spelling my name differently on every document I sign and I have moved to stratford Ponavon to feed geese like the real Shakespeare of old. On our second date, you said your favourite impressionist art movement was pointillism. Since then I have been secretly covering myself in small dots, hoping that when you notice you won't mistake it for a skin condition and not mention it out of politeness. On our third date you showed a slight preference for red wine. I hate red wine, but I've been washing my clothes in it ever since, ever since hoping you might confuse your love of a large glass of Merlot and find yourself irresistibly thinking about me because of that faint vinegary smell that still lingers long after I have left the room. <laughs> On our fourth date, you told me you deactivated all of your dating apps a long time ago because they were taking up too much of your day to day. I told you I had tin a Tinder account once but I was consistently and methodically swiping left on each profile because I saw them as the pages of a wonderful novel and each profile was a new journey, a new discovery. You told me I was doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> on our fifth date, you showed me photographs of sea monkeys. I tried desperately to find a place that still sells, that still sells sea monkeys before realizing this is not the 1980s. I am hoping you will be fooled by my photographs of dandruff floating in a bowl. <laughs> On our sixth date, you told me that the Big Bang Theory was long overdue for retirement. I have gathered together a small pension fund for each of the cast members, and I have sent Channel 4 a long expository email suggesting that they replace their regular broadcasting of the Big Bang Theory with documentaries about trains featuring ruddy cheap men from the north of England. Apparently trains don't sell like they used to, which is ironic given that I've now sent all of my money to the Big Bang Theory cast and I can't even afford a megabus. On our seventh day, we used the red letter day vouchers your aunt bought you for your birthday to go on a Segway trip. I have chosen that moment to tell you that the inventor of the Segway, Mr. Segway, tragically died when he accidentally drove his Segway off a cliff. You told me it was an inelegant Segway. I laughed, but 100% didn't get the joke until three days later. On our eighth date, you showed me your Pinterest and sent me a Snapchat of your face vomiting rainbows. I have a MySpace, uh, I had a MySpace at one point in time, but now it has disappeared along with my memories of childhood before Facebook, which gleefully informs me I have, no, I have had no significant life events since being born, and invites me to see friendships like some sort of awful fucking sociopathic relationship accountant. I told you Instagram is out of the question and you told me good because I don't understand filters. <laughs> On our ninth date, you told me that you thought things were taking a turn for the worse and that my idea of romance was too unconventional. I asked you whether this was about the time you told me to name the most romantic film that I, I had ever seen, and I said, Cars. <laughs> <laughs> On our tenth date, you told me you were auditioning for a part in the nativity put on by your local amateur dramatic society. 
as a surprise, I have auditioned for the part of baby Jesus. <laughs> because in every depiction of Jesus I've seen, he has a beard. And from the sounds of it, the production badly needs a rigorous injection of realism. <laughs> they offered me the part of audience member. <laughs> I declined. <laughs> On our 11th date, you said that the circumstances of our meeting remind you of, reminded you of sliding doors. I took offence because everything in that film is shit and there's no happy ending. You reminded me that I missed the last two minutes of the film because I saw a balloon hanging from a tree outside and went to fetch it. <laughs> On our last date, we booked a table at the first date's restaurant to be one of those low-key background couples. <laughs> By the end of the night, you had signed up for the show. <laughs>